I'm going to show you on the screen up here uh, how to um, do a score with different parts that have different transpositions quickly in Sibelius. Now I'm aware that from straw polls I've done before we seem to have a sort of 50-50 split of Sibelius in Finale. Um, the theory for doing this stuff is exactly the same so it doesn't really make any difference it's just that I'm a kind of pro Sibelius user so I'm going to show it in Sibelius if you use Finale then you can work out use the same process for Finale and what I'm talking about now is the um, the second assignment which I'm sure you've all finished already so this is a total waste of time but just for those of you who maybe are just putting finishing touches to it um, I thought this could be really useful so in Sibelius, I've just opened a new score. Feel free to um, follow along if you want or, or just watch this. Um, and remember, the whole point of this assignment is that you have to create um, a, an arrangement, a mixed bag arrangement that will work with anything. So a few of you have come to me and told me that you're doing a classical repertoire, which is cool. That's really great. But I've challenged you to think about how you're going to deal with that if you walk into a class and there are 17 guitarists and eight percussionists who don't read right how is your arrangement gonna work for those people okay so you've got to think outside the box it's also great if you have got a few parts in there that are maybe more complex for reading and that's because you know in a year seven eight class you quite often will have a few kids who are learning privately or are self-taught and they can handle more stuff but that's the trick, really. It's kind of like a musical formula. Can you come up with an arrangement that will work whatever the instruments are? For now, however, I'm just going to think about the different parts that I've got here. So I might just do... Um, no, not that. I wonder what I can do. Well, I'll just... I know what I'll do. I'll just say that I've got a flute on the melody, even though it's not specifically going to be flute. I'll rename it in a second. And I'll imagine that I'm going to have a counter melody... Uh, or kind of a harmony part. I also want something which is going to be for um, for a chord playing instrument. So I, I'm going to call this on. I'll use a piano, but with the intention of putting guitar chords over the top of it. And then uh, maybe I'm going to have a whole load of uh, percussion lines. Now this isn't possibly um, enough yet because, for instance, what am I going to do for instruments that play uh, in bass clef? You know, am I going to have the counter melody and bass clef, or do I actually need to have a bass line instrument? Maybe I do. So I'm, I, I'm not selling what I'm doing here as the perfect solution, but I'm just giving you an idea of how you might uh, get kicked off. Yep. Don't you get the thing, the instrument thing? Instrument thing. I pressed yeah, change the instruments the there. Okay, so change instruments here. Yeah. So if I then go to... Um, like you know obviously set up all your title and your key and whatever I'm not actually going to write a piece of music so uh, so I'm not going to worry too much about that but once I get into the score I'm now thinking about these lines not just in like in a normal score you'd be thinking about this line for just one part in this case I'm thinking about it for all of the different things that it can do so I'm going to say this is the melody and this is this is going to be like either a counter melody or a harmony or a backing vocal equivalent kind of thing. So I'm going to say um, I'll just call it harmony one because you might have you might have three harmony lines. It's entirely up to you. I've actually got a file that I'll dig out uh, maybe this week or next week um, uh, of a uh, fantastic song by a, a band of the of many many years ago called Savage Garden that you can. <laughs> you can have a look at. Uh, and I'm going to call this, I love that someone said yuck, um, I'm going to call this bass clef, as in for bass clef instruments, okay? Um, okay, and percussion, that could be a, a range of things, you know, whatever you decide is going to be available. Now while I'm telling you it's got to work for any combination of instruments, and that's the kind of the, the tricky bit of the task, it's also fine if you say to me, this is what my classroom has. So if you want to, you know, suggest, I've written for, you know, my, I've got a class set of guitars or a class set of off xylophones or whatever, then I'm kind of happy to take that as your baseline. But if you still ha get two French horn players come into that class, they still need to be able to play their French horn instead of whatever your baseline is. Do you see what I mean? So any, that's where the any combination happens. Okay, so I'm now going to go and write my amazing melody. 
as you can see it's amazing and here's there's the uh, counter melody and I probably want to rename these staves as well just to be fussy I will be marking you on your score presentation so make it amazing okay and um, you know some bass clef notes because bass clef instruments always get interesting parts and so on and so forth I mentioned before the idea of if you're thinking you know how am I going to cover harmony now it sounds like the Rugrats thing um, that you might want to do guitar chords over the top of that um, So on and so forth. Ooh, doesn't like that one. I know. Let's do a domain. Yay. Um, you can make these show as guitar diagrams as well, possibly slightly better than um, than just chord names, because then students who don't actually know how to finger those chords can do it. Or you could put a chord, like a little chord chart. You see quite often in guitar books, it'll have all of those chords in a kind of encyclopedia at the start at the start okay so this is not the ultimate solution but it's one solution for you but the trick that I want to show you now is the really important bit so I'm still really leaving you to figure out that exact bit but here is something that will save you lots and lots of time I'm gonna go back into my instruments list and to answer your question before you can also get back into this by pressing I at any time while using Sibelius should have brought a copy of my book to flash around the room shouldn't I um, yeah so um, so back in this list now because I need to think okay what's gonna happen with this melody I, I set it up as a flute before but what's gonna happen if I get a B flat instrument like a clarinet yeah so let's go to clarinet in B flat and I'm going to add that into my score and what if the harmony line is also needs to be played by a B flat instrument so I'm now going to go over here and I'm actually just going to move these clarinets around so that they sit underneath the melody and the harmony line and then maybe I'll get an alto sax to cover my um, to cover my melody and harmony lines as well Bless you. And oh, while I've, I'm up with the clarinets, I can see bass clarinet here. I'm going to get a bass clarinet in B flat. And I'm going to put that as an alternative to my bass clef instruments, even though bass clarinet in B flat actually plays um, in treble clef. It transposes an octave and a second, so it will it would suit that particular part. Maybe I should just call that bass instrument rather than bass clef. Uh, probably the other really common transposition is uh, French horn, yeah? Oh, sorry, is in F. So an example of that is a French horn. Whoops. Sorry, French horn. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can you do that? Um, okay, well, I'm not getting a French horn here horn in F I bet it's called yeah there we go okay so I'll, again I want to add this to both my uh, harmony and my melody lines okay so now my score has kind of really blown out yeah it's looking really massive note that in Sibelius by default you always look at a non transposing score a concert pitch score and you press this button to go to transposing keys okay um, finale used to open in transposing does it still open automatically in transposing Does anyone know who's the finale genius around here does it does it automatically open in transposing pitch or in concert pitch now okay good so that's worth knowing. sorry you can, yeah. You go to the options menu, is it? And then you choose transposing yeah, you score. Just, I just see like or yeah. Okay, great. So just be aware, though, because obviously that's kind of important. Um, but it won't matter as much when we get to parts in a second. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, okay, well, this melody part I want to have in all of these different versions. But let me name them first so that will make more sense. So I'm going to say melody 
in F or melody for F instruments might be a better thing to call it for F transposition okay there's that part and then I'll say melody for B flat transposition Ah, have you seen this before? See how the funny fonts are happening? It's because after the flat, when I wrote the flat, it changed it into a musical font. It's that easy to fix. You just go over here and change this back to times or whatever it was. I don't actually know, I don't know that it was times, but that'll do. Um, and this is melody, melody for E flat. Do you know how to write the sharps and flats? All oh, right. Okay. So you can hold down Command on a Mac computer, and then just press the corresponding button on the keypad. We don't have. I don't have a keypad on my laptop, so I'm just going to simply right-click or Control-click on a Mac, and then they're always there inside your menu. Melody for E flat. Trent. I right clicked, yeah. Right click gives you a context sensitive menu, and the sharps and flats are in that menu. Yeah. Okay, so you can see now I've done that. And then my harmony line, similar kind of thing. So I'm going to say uh, harmony, harmony for F trans. Sorry if any of this is not neat, but I don't want to spend ages and ages on it, as I've got a number of these little skill things for you today. Harmon, har harmony. Harmony for B flat. Harmony for E flat. Okay. And probably my bass clef as well. Can anyone think of a, a low instrument with an E flat transposition? There is one at least. Thank you very much. Um, was that Alec, the sax player up the back? Who shouted that one? Yeah. Um, so barith baritone sax. The chances of having a couple of people rock up to your class with a barry sax in year seven or eight is fairly small. So I don't think I would take a lot of marks off that for that. But certainly it's worth having um, a, a low B flat instrument. I, for those of you who don't know, if people learn um, trombone or euphonium or tenor horn in the um, brass band tradition, they actually learn it in treble clef. So trombone in brass band is learned in treble clef in B flat. So it's the same transposition as a B flat. And there, there may be some E flat strange middle sized tubers and things like that as well. So you don't hurt yourself by providing transpositions. OK, so basically now I've got that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight my melody part. And I can highlight the whole part in Sibelius by just triple clicking it. I imagine that there's a similar trick in finale for quickly selecting a whole part. So triple click is three clicks, as opposed to a double click, which is two. Yeah. It's also known as the frustrated click. Um, and what I can do now is I can quickly copy and paste that into these other three melody parts. And of course, they all look the same here. But if I go into my transposing score, then they all hop into their different transpositions. Now this is the uh, this is the issue that you're going to have to think about at this point is what how is the range working for the different instruments because although they're now all correctly transposed for me for those different instruments you can see that Sibelius is coloring some of the notes in the horn a deep red so deep red in Sibelius means difficult for an amateur and bright red means impossible unless you're James Morrison. Um, so I would need to consider range then. So I would recommend to you maybe going through an orchestration book or using some reliable websites to check on range. And you might end up with some funny little things because, of course, I chose B-flat clarinet, which is fine. But what about B-flat trumpet? And what about B-flat something else that plays in B-flat? Um, <laughs> there's stuff, right? Come on, help me out here. Yeah, soprano sax, exactly. Whoever thinks of the poor soprano. So you may decide that you actually need to modify the part in the B-flat part so that it fits or provide two B-flat parts, one for clarinet and one for everything else. Or you know, Those are the things you have to think about. And there's no one solution that I can give to all of you. 
because it will be different for you depending on how wide the range of that particular part is. If you do a classical melody, and classical with a small c, um, it's likely to have a very wide range and you know things which might be difficult compared to something like um, a top current top 40 pop song which tend to have quite flat you know melodies um, unless it's Daniel Johns as we discovered yesterday okay so I've done that I'm now going to do exactly the same down here for my harmony part so I'm going to highlight that whole part by pressing uh, triple clicking it and I'm going to paste it into all these parts and I'm going to do the same for my bass clef part slash parts okay I've copied that over and that looks really funny there the bass clarinet but that's because it's at pitch when I go transposing score see how it jumps up an octave in a second so that then makes sense okay so let's just assume that I've really taken note oh. yeah that's working I've really taken note of all my different transpositions and that they're all correct okay what I can now do is go to my parts and if you've used sib 7 much more but the parts are over here now so I can go and just check that my parts are all looking fine and they're not particularly exciting because it's not a very long arrangement of bum dum boo um, but you know you, that's another sort of chance to consider the range once they're transposed parts in Sibelius will always show us transposed even if the score is set to concert pitch because obviously it's useless to give that poor, poor clarinetist a part in concert pitch and, unless, unless they're going, you're trying to teach them sight transposition so once I've done that now, I'm finished, but this score is a mess because it's full of all these instruments playing the same thing. Okay, so it's rubbish. So what I could do, there's, you know, there's this kind of solution at this point, which is to uh, save this score, save another copy of it, and delete all of the extraneous staves. That's one way you could do it. Um, but now you've got two versions of the score, and that's always kind of a little bit confusing, especially if you need to come back to this as the classroom teacher in a hurry and make a few changes for a new class and then chuck it out again. So here's my handy hint. Uh, I don't know how to do this in Finale, but I'm assured that it is definitely possible. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, again, triple click on the instruments that are simply repetitions. So I'm going to leave my top melody part. I'm going to triple click on my melody. Uh, the, it's the same part, but it's in F. And I'm going to shift click now to highlight all of those other melody parts. So those three really are extraneous. They're just for different transpositions. They don't add anything to the arrangement. I'm now going to right click on them. I'm going to go down to hide or show and I'm going to say show in parts. So in other words they're now hidden in the score you'll see all those instrument, all those notes sort of become greyed out. And then the final thing, and I always do this with a shortcut and can never remember where the uh, actual option is, the shortcut is a really easy one to remember it's command alt shift h. Uh, <laughs> um, but oh no here we go yeah it's in the layout tab it says hide empty staves. So if I now go to that all of those parts will be hidden, except they're not. Okay, well, the shortcut worked. I'll do it again in a second. Okay, so now I'll go and do it for... Oh, that one didn't hide. Oh, no, that's harmony. Okay, so now I'll go and do my harmony parts. Hide or show. Show in parts. Let's see whether the button works this time. Yeah, okay, there we go. All right, so now I'm down to melody, harmony, bass clef. I definitely don't need to show the bass clef in... Oops, hide it first. Hide in parts. Show in parts, sorry. Hide it. And I didn't do anything with my percussion on my piano, but they're pretty static. I don't need piano in E flat, obviously. Okay, so now I've got a nice, neat score again. And make sure that when you make these arrangements, you do not only do nice score layout, but it's got all the correct dynamics, um, phrasing. Uh, articulation, those kind of things that you would expect to find in a, an arrangement. But in my list of uh, transpositions, I've got, or if parts, sorry, I've got all of the different transpositions. So they don't show in my score, but they do show in my parts. And the last thing I would say to you that's really cool is as well as having a Sibelius file of it, it's really quick now in Sibelius to go to the export menu under file and go to PDF and make one PDF that's got everything in it so the score and all the parts in one file which is really helpful because you can then if your school has like a learning management system intranet that kind of thing you can quickly chuck that PDF up for when not if they lose their part um, and just export that out quickly as a PDF 
So that's the end of my tutorial and you can ask questions.